Well, I had a really great run this morning, but my favorite part about running is not running anymore and coming in and having some coffee. It's so hot, there's no way I want a hot coffee. So I am going to show you how to make my favorite cold brew. I'm gonna make my own oat milk today, but I'm not just using oats. I'm using soaked cashews as well. And the reason for that is just to give the oat milk a little bit of a creamier taste. So I've got about just under a half a cup of cashews, soak them in water overnight and throw it in, but it is about half a cup. I've got four cups of filtered water and I'm just gonna blend this for about a minute. So hold on to your ears because it is not musical. And I'll turn that off. It's already looking good, but I don't want to drink just cashew milk. I want to, I really, really, really love the taste of oat milk. Um, and I think it's, it's so healthy for you. Look at that. It could be a milkshake already. That is absolutely beautiful. So now I have about a half a cup of oats. I'm going to put that in there. And I'm using agave. You can use dates, you can use maple syrup, you can use nothing if you don't want any sweetness, but I, I like a little sweetness. And for this, I'm using about an eighth of a cup and just a little tiny pinch of salt. So I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna do it for 10 seconds. I'm not gonna do it for 12. I'm gonna do it for 10 seconds because that is where you get slimy, slimy almond milk. Here we go. Set this over here. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. And I didn't even blend that on a very high setting because I didn't want to add any heat to it because it is it can get gross. I'm gonna use a sieve and I'm just gonna pour it through. There will likely be chunks of oat still in there because again I didn't blend it very long. Alright, let that do its thing. I'm gonna just let that sort of drain. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you about my coffee. I'm not gonna make it in front of you because that would take 24 hours and it would be the most boring 24 hours of your life, but it's a one to four ratio. So if you want one cup of coffee, use a quarter cup of grind and a cup of filtered water and you put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. That is it, so no need to show you. I'm just gonna add, oh gosh, look at the difference. Cold brew coffee is so rich and dark. And it tastes amazing, just like that. Um, but I can't wait, because I deserve a coffee. I went for a run, so I'm gonna add my oat milk. No matter what it is you love doing, if it's running, if it's walking, if it's yoga, if you've done something and you deserve this, take 30 seconds and make yourself a cold brew coffee with oat milk. Really, really good. With my cold brew coffee that I made, I thought something amazing to go with it would be blueberry muffins. Um, later this afternoon, I'm going to be creating a reading room and I want it to feel a bit like a cafe bistro. So I'm kicking out the couch and we're gonna put in some nice tables and I want people to be able to enjoy a cup of coffee and what goes better with coffee than muffins. Um, so to start this recipe, I'm gonna use two cups of all-purpose flour. You know, just nice level cups here. And like with most baking recipes, we're gonna do two bowls. We're gonna have one bowl for the dry ingredients and one bowl for the wet. Okay, move that big jar out of the way. The next thing is three quarter cup of sugar. And I've lost my quarter cup measure, so I'm gonna do a half a cup and then a little bit more. And if I drop a little extra sugar in there, it's just gonna taste better. All right, so I've got a half a cup in there and then I'll do about a quarter. So half a half. Okay, the sugar's in. Delicious. A half a teaspoon of salt, pour that in. I've got my black salt, which I find delicious and beautiful. And then baking powder, not soda, baking powder. And that takes three tablespoons of baking powder. Now, just stir that together till it's mixed, and then we're gonna move on to the wet ingredients. Okay, I'm just gonna move this out of the way for a minute, 
and slide over my wet ingredients. So this is what I meant by two bowls. A lot of times when you bake a cake or muffins or cupcakes, you are gonna wanna get two bowls dirty. It's just much easier. Um, I'm gonna start with an egg. And that way I can crack the egg in, make sure everything is good. I'm so lucky that I was, I don't have chickens yet, but I was able to get my hands on farm fresh eggs. And I wanted to talk just a second about farm fresh eggs and safety. Um, when I had my chickens in Canada, I always just took my egg straight from the nest and did not wash it. I would write the date on my egg and then put it in the refrigerator, you know, dirty. Sounds gross, but that protects the eggs and keeps the bacteria out. Then right before I use it, I'm going to walk over to the sink and give it a wash. Now, just because I know my egg was dirty, I mean, I, these are not my eggs. These are farm fresh eggs I got from someone else, but just in case they do what I do and don't wash them, give my hands a good wash. I needed to anyway. I had flour and sugar on them and head back over to my bowl. Now I've got my egg ready. I'm gonna crack it into an empty bowl. And the reason for that is I just wanna make sure, I do this with all my eggs. Anytime I use an egg, you just wanna make sure that it's in good shape. If you get any shells in your egg, that's a great opportunity to get the shell out. As a matter of fact, see, got the eggshell right there. And if I had of cracked that into my flour mixture or my milk mixture, that would have been a much different story. Okay, so. We've got one egg. I have a quarter cup of vegetable oil. You could use melted butter, I'm sure. Um, maybe canola oil would be fine too. And then I need a cup of milk. And I just made some delicious oat milk. So I'm gonna put that to use right now. Pour out a cup. That is it for the wet ingredients. Now, I just wanna kind of give that a quick stir. It doesn't matter that I'm using the same spatula because I'm about to pour this into, into there. So you just wanna make sure that the egg is broken in there and that it's somewhat mixed. Now, I'm gonna go back to my dry ingredients, make a little circle, a little well. You make a well and then you pour your wet ingredients right into that well. I think it's really, somebody said that is satisfying to see the wet ingredients fall into a powdery hole. Give it a little stir. Um, with muffins, you don't wanna over stir anything. You just wanna give it a little bit of a stir. You, it will be a little bit clumpy and that is what you want. Okay, at this texture, I wanna stop stirring so that I can add my blueberries and then just stir it a little bit more and it won't be too much. I'm just using um, a cup-ish. I go heavy, so this is probably a bit more than a cup of frozen blueberries. You can use fresh, but at this point, this is where you can do whatever you want. You can have like a strawberry explosion muffin. You can add chocolate chips and bananas. This is just a basic muffin recipe. You get to choose what you wanna put in. I'm making blueberry muffins, so I'm gonna pour that in and these frozen blueberries are gorgeous they're just gigantic give that a gentle stir the the blue is going to start marbling in the in the batter and we are ready to bake it looks gorgeous already look at that it is beautiful i like how the blueberry starts to kind of marble in the batter just start digging out big old chunks of muffin mix I think you know you're safe if you fill them about three quarters of a cup full and then I put them in a 350 degree preheated oven all right we're just gonna put these in the oven put those in and I'm just gonna set my timer so I don't forget um, but I want to check them in about 12 minutes <laughs> 